has bruises on his wrists. I still remember my mother's words and the way my eyes watered as I held the phone. My older brother, who is severely autistic, had been thrown on the ground and handcuffed in the science center of my hometown. Even though he was accompanied by his home staff member who repeatedly screamed, he's autistic, he's autistic! I'm trained to handle him, we are fine! The guard ignored her. He did not look at my brother and see a patient with a neuropsychiatric disorder who was in need of assistance. He saw an aggressive man with dark brown skin whom he could exercise undue and unnecessary violence against. I hung up the phone, took a deep breath, and headed to the hospital for work. When I arrived, I was still shaking with rage. Being an intern and an underrepresented minority is like looking at life through two different lenses. There is the clinical, learn how to be a doctor lens, and there's the, is this system really helping to rectify institutionalized racism lens? Some would argue that I should focus on doctoring first, and then later challenge the system. But that is not just incorrect, it is impossible. Not when people with disabilities, especially disabled people of color like my brother, are more likely to be killed by the police compared to their white counterparts. Not when hospitals are more likely to suspect and report black and Latino families for child abuse and more likely to avoid reporting comparable situations in white families. Not when college graduate African American women are more likely to die from preventable childbirth complications than white high school dropouts due to racial bias and neglect. And not when a 2016, yes, 2016 survey showed that half of all the white medical students queried believed at least one false statement about biological differences between black and whites, such as blacks having less sensitive nerve endings and faster coagulation rates. And the list goes on and on and on. These statistics roll through my thoughts, like movie credits, all the time. These statistics are constant reminders to me that it is not just about my experience. It is not just about my brother being brutalized by a security guard, or my grandmother dying of breast cancer before I even got the chance to meet her because she received subpar medical treatment due to the color of her skin. It is about the pervasive issue of systemic and institutionalized racism against people who look like me. <laughs> when I was younger, I thought that my experiences would matter to the world. Unfortunately, when I did open up and share my painful experiences of racism, I was often met with, ah, it probably had nothing to do with race. Or my personal favorite, well, hmm, I'm not convinced this is racism. How can you prove it? At first, I just felt sad and angry. But then, I channeled my emotions into action. I armed myself with data. If my experiences didn't matter, maybe scientific evidence would. <laughs> In fact, this is why today, I'm not just sharing my anecdotal experience with you, but the statistics to back it up. Because to be honest, I don't trust that I'll be believed by some of you if I don't. I'm not just a doctor learning pediatrics. I'm one of only 10% of the American doctors identifying as underrepresented minorities, even though underrepresented minorities make up over 30% of the US population. And I am often the only black or Spanish speaking doctor amongst a sea of white coats in a patient's room. And that matters. It matters in the knowing looks I receive from patients. It matters in the deep sigh of relief when I double back to see Spanish-speaking patients and their families after rounds and find that they had a myriad of questions but were afraid to ask or couldn't because the team just didn't have time to call an interpreter that day. 
and did matters in the quiet beckoning from a family member as the team files out of the room. Do you really agree with this treatment plan, Doc? You know what I mean, they will say, which is code for, can I trust them? And I do know what they mean. Data shows that ethnic minority patients receive less empathy, less attention, and less information compared to their white counterparts. I don't need to see the data to prove what I have witnessed throughout my entire life. But in a world where we as minorities are often invalidated, seeing what I have known all along is like a pat on the back. But what is obvious and heartbreaking to me is a source of humor for others. One day, I was listening to patients sign out from a co-resident. Ha, oh my gosh, I have to tell you about this patient. Her family asked me if we were experimenting on her. Obviously, no one would do that. I maintained a neutral facial expression, but in my mind, I was irate. Had they never heard of the infamous Tuskegee Henrietta Lacks or Havasupai atrocities? Were they unaware that renowned institutions have continued to conduct documented unethical research against minorities as recently as the 1990s? <laughs> Here is what I wanted to say to my co-resident. <clears throat> Many patients who look like me do not trust the medical system because the medical system has not yet proven itself to be trustworthy. And although I am a proud member of the medical system, to be honest, I don't always trust it either. But I said nothing to my colleague. After all, the medical system is made up of people. It is not immune from sexism, racism, or any other isms. And sometimes I speak out against these isms, and sometimes I keep quiet. Knowing when to do what is an art, and making the wrong choice can be damaging. But Sometimes I take that risk. When I hear colleagues say, this kid doesn't look like she would do drugs, I often respond, what does a kid look like who does drugs? When I'm constantly called by the names of other black female pediatric interns as if we all look alike, I can't help but respond, ha, wrong one. Because responding with laughter is less distracting to my work than letting it upset me. But sometimes, being upset is unavoidable. <clears throat> I sat at the bedside of my patient, an adorable little girl who had her hair and two neat buns on the side of her head. She looked at me and whispered, sometimes I notice things, like I'm treated differently than other patients, you know, because of how I look. You know what I mean, she said lifting up her arm and pointing to her skin, which was a lovely hue of brown. I took a deep breath. She wasn't the first time I'd had a patient tell me this, and she would not be the last. I smiled at her as I blinked back tears. I'm working on it, I told her. Being a doctor, an underrepresented minority, and an activist is like looking at life through two different lenses. There is the clinical doctoring lens, and there is the rectifying systemic racism lens. But maybe these lenses shouldn't be different. Maybe there should only be one lens. Maybe one shouldn't have to be part of a marginalized group to fight for them to be treated fairly. Maybe social justice shouldn't be an optional course a required curriculum and maybe just maybe all doctors should be